Hey you, what up? Mariam here, welcome to my channel, welcome back. In today's video, we are testing out a lot of new makeup. I know you guys are here for these types of videos, as am I. I love trying new makeup together with you. I love to kind of like formulate a first impression, an opinion. I love to just like slap it on, let the makeup do the talking, and create a look, of course. So this is the look that I created today, using a lot of newness from some brands that I've actually never even featured on my channel, never talked about before. You are in for a treat today. As always in my intros, I'm gonna remind you to subscribe if you aren't already, hit that notification bell. And now let's get into this testing new makeup. What's good, what's bad, what's amazing, what's trash? Let's talk, shall we? Let's do this. I have a new primer to test out. This one is from Elizabeth Mott, or is it from Think Me Later? I honestly have no idea. But this is a titanium dioxide zinc oxide sunscreen face primer with SPF 30. So I like the fact that it is a mineral sunscreen primer as opposed to a chemical one. I am someone with very sensitive skin, sensitive in the sense that it breaks out. I have oily, acne prone skin, so I am not one to react very well to chemical sunscreens with ingredients such as homosalate. Yes, I've mentioned this ingredient before and people had their panties in a bunch a little bit, all right? But for me, this is an ingredient that just does not work for my skin. So I stay away from it. I stay away from chemical sunscreens. Anyway, back to this Thank Me Later mineral face primer. Let's try it. This looks like a skin tint. Looks like it definitely has some color. I'm gonna try to blend this out with a brush because I actually have a clean primer brush that I prepared for today. It looks like it blurs out into nothing. And it also looks like I need a lot more product in order to cover my entire face with the sunscreen. The reason why I became interested in trying this product, even though I've never heard of this brand, is because typically I have a hard time finding sunscreen primers or sunscreens in general that allow for easy makeup application on top. And so this was kind of intriguing to me. The fact that it was literally marketed as a makeup product, but it in fact is a mineral sunscreen is what interested me about it. I mean, so far so good. It doesn't feel too sticky. It feels pretty light. It has a very slight delicate scent that I like. I'm not turned off by it, but actually, on second thought, I do see in my mirror and also in my monitor that it did leave my skin looking a little bit more perfected, just like a little bit more smooth, a little bit more even toned than before. I guess that tint does do something. A little bit sticky, but not any more sticky than a regular primer. Definitely less sticky than a regular sunscreen. Okay, next up for foundation, I am gonna grab the new Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation. So this is actually the same bounce foundation that originally launched a few years ago, and I did review that one years ago, it feels like. This one, though, is in a repackaged tube because that original one had a very problematic dispenser. It had a hard time pumping out the product. So now this one is just a squeezy tube. I have it in the shade 3.2 warm medium sand. So I'm assuming that is close to my shade or maybe it is my shade. I don't know. They only sent me one shade in like a chocolate cake that you had to actually crack. That was in the form of the original Beauty Blender foundation. So that was kind of cool. All right, so let's see if this is gonna work. Oh yeah, that is very much not my shade. Shoot, mm, yeah. Definitely feels like a bit of a white cast on my skin. Shoot. But we will make it work. The consistency though is very similar to the original foundation. I actually don't really see a difference. It applies fairly evenly. The coverage is medium, though for some reason I'm seeing a lot of separation here in this area. Maybe this is due to the fact that I'm applying it over that sunscreen primer but if I stipple it in, it seems to go away. So not too problematic, but damn this shade. I was really trying to embrace my summer tan. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, this is not looking amazing. This is 
definitely a shade that I'm gonna have to give to my mom. This looks like it's more like my mom's, or maybe my sister's shade, or maybe it's my winter shade, but I don't know. It just seems really, really, really light on the monitor. Could I really be this shade in the winter time? Almost hard for me to believe. I'm gonna actually have to go back and uh, rewatch my original videos just to see if this is indeed my shade. Oh damn, now I have a really floating head. And this isn't one of those foundations that's super sheer. It actually has coverage, so it's a little bit difficult for me to shear it out. So what I'm gonna have to do is grab a paper towel over here and just like remove some of this product. I think in order for me to make this work, I'm gonna have to use a lot less than I originally anticipated. But damn it, I really wanted to try this foundation in its full glory as a fuller coverage type of foundation. You know what's funny? I'm one of those people that can better work with a darker foundation than a lighter foundation. I seem to like get really lost when I apply a foundation that's a few shades lighter than me. I guess it's because naturally my body is so much darker than the rest of my face that I kind of like excel in that category when I try to match my foundation to my body as opposed to my face. But when I go much lighter on my face, I just feel so confused and I don't know what to do. Like, Do you see that rim around <laughs> my face? It looks so funny to me. But this is what testing new makeup is all about. It's all about just you know, embracing the problems and embracing the concerns and try to make it work, you know? That's what it's all about. Okay, so outside of the color, I will say that this foundation applies quite nicely. It is a thicker consistency, so if you are someone who's not used to wearing fuller coverage foundation, then this may be a little bit tricky at first, getting it to apply evenly, so you may need to work it in there, just like stippling motions and trying to go quicker rather than slower, I think is the key. But what I do like is that it has perfected my texture. I like the fact that the finish is somewhat matte, but not overly matte where it looks fake or cakey though that's really hard to tell right now given the color also as you can see my freckles are still showing through but the coverage the tit is definitely powerful so let me now grab an oldie but a goodie Tarte Shape Tape I have not used this concealer in a minute this is such a full coverage concealer and it's always been a favorite of mine for glam look at that so medium is like my regular shade of concealer and it is significantly darker I at least I could see in my mirror that it is significantly darker than this foundation so there's no way that 3.20 w is even my winter shade i think that was just a mistake that was made when this was sent to me but not a problem i'll get my hands on the right shade but anyway i whipped out my tart shape tape just because it's been a while since i've used it and i miss it i remembered all the tart trips that i went on back when like brand trips were really popular i kind of miss tart fam not kind of i really do miss them they're really good people although their team has changed and right now i don't even know who's really on their team, but Maureen, the founder, and some of the original people who worked at Tarte were incredible, just like pioneers in the industry, they were super talented, and just like incredibly inspiring, you know? Ugh, still such a great concealer, honestly. This covers literally everything. It looks like butter under my skin. Under my eye is what I meant. Just looks so damn good. Granted, I don't need such full coverage nowadays. I don't really reach for it. But honestly, I really should. Because with this type of concealer coverage, you really don't need any sort of color correcting underneath your eye. You don't really need to do anything at all. You just need to blend it out and that's it. I know not everybody loves Tarte Shape Tape the way that I do. I think this is a concealer that might be a little too drying for some, especially those with already dry skin. But for me, with my very oily skin, this is like an ideal concealer. It is incredible. And the fact that it wears so well, it never fades, it doesn't crease. I freaking miss it. And I think I'm gonna start using it more often. It is that good. I am gonna just like let this sit on my face, but I am so bothered by the skin color that I'm gonna reach for Danessa Myricks. I have the Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder in shade eight over here. This is quite a deep shade for me, but I'm gonna use it to bronze up and to warm up my skin tone because right now it's just not looking like my skin tone and it's throwing me off. I don't know how to do makeup when I look like this. So I'm gonna grab my Rare Beauty foundation brush, dip into this shade eight and I'm gonna use it to kind of bring back the color and essentially bronze up could have probably also done this with the new NARS Laguna cream bronzer that one I love spoiler alert that product will absolutely be a fave 
in my next faves x fails just because i've been using it non-stop it is such an easy product to use and it gives like the most natural the most believable looking bronze tan okay that suddenly makes me feel like a human again the shade 8 also has a bit of a yellow undertone so maybe it's not like the ideal shade for me to bronze up with but what I'm gonna do is actually kind of just dab it all over. And I'm using this to sort of set the foundation. I'm gonna apply a little bit on my jawline and then kind of just like tap that up. Okay, better. Not amazing yet, but we'll get there. I also have shade 10, which is very, very deep, but maybe I can just add a tiny bit just for contouring. Cause this product is still very sheer. Like it gives a hint of color, but it's still very sheer. So it definitely stretches across multiple skin tones. I'm just gonna go in with my foundation brush. I'm gonna add a bit right there, right there, forehead. I barely want that to be noticeable. I just want a little bit of a contour, you know? Just kind of like stippling that in. Yeah. Okay, somehow that worked. Let's move on to a new product from Sigma. This is their new Soft Focus Setting Powder. I got it in the shade Vanilla Bean, but this actually comes in four shades. I'm just not a huge fan of flesh-toned setting powders. I feel like they're never really the right shade. If they are flesh-toned, then there needs to be not four, but like 40 shades really for every single skin tone. So for me, I far prefer to go with like a lighter translucent rather than one that's supposed to like match my medium or tan skin tone, you know? Because otherwise, I say this all the time, but like you've worked on your foundation, you already like the way that it looks, and then you're gonna add a setting powder that is flesh tone. It's gonna change the color of your foundation that you've already worked so hard on. And I'm just not a fan of that. Okay, can someone tell me? where the lift tab is on this damn plastic sticker. Okay, packaging is not good. The plastic sticker that's covering the holes is not removing easily. In fact, it's ripping in multiple places and no scroll wheel, but let's see. So the shade is vanilla bean. Gonna apply that under my eyes just to set my under eye. I'm gonna use the Sigma setting powder brush, F12. Seems like a really fine powder. I don't know. And I feel like it's changing the color of my concealer. This is a very talky powder. It feels kind of heavy on the skin. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Some people will actually like that, but it definitely gives that mask feel. A little too heavy for me personally. Like it's okay. There's a time and place for these types of powders, but too much, too much for my liking. I mean, you could definitely like snatch the jaw and like lift the cheekbone with this one. But to me, it just feels like one of those 2016, 2017 type of makeup products where like more was more. I don't really find that to be the case anymore. Mm, not a love at first sight. Let's move on to brows. I have some new brow products to test out. First of all, I've got this new cutesy little package from Benefit. Turn up the brow volume. And in it, we've got a gimme brow, tinted volumizing eyebrow gel. We've got a pencil sharpener. And also we have two shades of the new pencil, which is the first brow pencil with powder and fibers for natural looking textures and fullness. Wow, have you guys heard of this? So this is a $25 product and it is called Gimme Brow plus volumizing pencil. Looks like this is a traditional pencil that you can sharpen with a traditional sharpener. I have two shades here, 4.5 and also five. It feels very powdery. 4.5 is a cooler brown and five is a slightly warmer, more chocolate brown. So I'm gonna go for the 4.5 because my brows are naturally on the cooler side. I'm gonna use the little brush on the other side to first brush them out like that. And then let's try it. Oh, this feels amazing. Very, very powdery. Easy color payoff. You barely need to touch the skin, but the color payoff is definitely there. I'm not sure if I'm seeing any fibers, but what I'm definitely seeing is a really quick and easy fill. That I really like. This is something that can give you just the most natural looking brow quickly without putting in too much effort. So this is a technique that even someone like myself who prefers the marker for brow application for like individual brow strokes. But this is something that even me, even I can utilize this because it's really easy and it's just great for every day in case you want like a little bit of fill, like a little bit of lift or length, you know? This looks very nice. It looks very groomed, very easy. The brow looks more full 
and just more perfected. Kind of need this in a different color. I still feel like this 4.5, even though it's a cooler brown, it's a little bit warmer than my actual brow. So I might need to get my hands on a few more shades. But so far, I really like this. This is up my alley. So I mentioned Tarte Trips earlier, and now I'm gonna mention Benefit Trips. I was lucky enough to go on some of the craziest Benefit Trips in history. Like Richard Branson's island, private island, like Tokyo in 2019, like France the year before, Mangiri. All the benefit trips were so over the top. They were so fun. They were so unique in every way because Benefit is one of those brands that really like to turn it up. I will say those were some of the best trips in like beauty influencer history. The Tarte trips and the Benefit trips were always like neck and neck. They were competing at one point for who can do the biggest, the craziest trip. I think overall Benefit was the one that finally got the trophy just because they were on like this massively large scale. But anyway, feeling kind of nostalgic talking about all these things. So I guess I'm gonna grab my Tarte Shape Tape. I'm gonna do something old school that I haven't done in a minute, but I feel like with this brow technique, this is what I wanna do. I wanna grab a flat brush, dip it into my Tarte Shape Tape, and I wanna clean up my brow underneath just a little bit. Not like the way that we used to do back in like 2017, but like something that I would do now. So like just directly underneath, all right, brows are coming through. They are very different from the kind of brows that I do nowadays, but that's not to say that I don't like them. I guess I'll grab the Gimme Brow just to set it in place. This is in the shade five. I'm just gonna fluff it up and kind of just lock the hairs in place. So now let's move on to something else. I have a new palette from Physicians Formula in collab with The Breakfast Club. Yes, the movie, The Breakfast Club, the 80s movie. I know, I kind of was like not expecting it myself, but here it is. Anyway, so this is a face palette. We've got some bronzers here, we've got some blushes, and we have some highlighters. I believe there was two face palettes and um, one eyeshadow palette in this whole collection, but this was the product that was like the most interesting to me, or at least it was like something that I would utilize. That I'm gonna grab my Big Sigma brush all over powder, and I'm gonna dip into the Sincerely Yours blush powder. Actually, this one's called The Rebel. This is very soft and smooth. I gotta say, Physicians Formula really does have some nice powder products. I really like their blushes. I like some of their bronzers, but their blushes always apply super, super, super smoothly, easily, especially when used with like a giant brush like this. Ooh, I think I might've overdid it. <laughs> I guess I was like feeling myself and like really getting into the mood. So let me go ahead and just buff that out a little bit. But yeah, that's looking just a little bit too much. I feel like I applied it a little too low. So I'm gonna need to raise that up a little bit. Okay. I don't know, it looks kind of crazy in the monitor, but really nice in the mirror. So I don't know, I'm confused. Is it looking good? <laughs> Or is it looking crazy? I'm gonna grab this other shade here. This one is called The Princess. And I'm gonna glide that on the top of my cheekbones. Just for like a little glow. I mean, this is a nice palette. These two blush shades are very, very nice. They're very wearable, they're easy to use. Let's see, maybe I can utilize this bronzer right on top. So this one is called The Athlete. I'm gonna use that to add a little bit of color along my jawline. I don't know if this color is noticeable. Perhaps not. So we have several things in the eye category. So firstly, we have this new palette for Makeup Forever. It's the Artist Color Pro Palette, and this is a eyes and face palette. Kind of like a mauve color story. It's got some pinks, some wine shades, some shimmery shades, some matte shades, and one big highlighter shade. Pretty, but I've got a couple more options here. From MAC, we have the Art Library. Flame Boyant palette. This looks a little bit more up my alley. These warm shades are definitely reminding me once again of 2017. I don't know what it is about this palette, but it is very reminiscent of all that makeup that we used to wear when the beauty community on YouTube and on Instagram was like thriving at its highest point. These are the colors that were used to create those dramatic cut crease looks. Everybody seemed to wear the same one. Now, I'm not gonna lie. It it looks familiar, it looks nostalgic, it looks like something I'm gonna have to keep for the memories. Also, we have another palette, MAC Art Library, it's designer. This one, ooh, is a colorful palette. I love color for the summertime. This one's got a yellow, a green, some brighter neon colors, some shimmery shades. This is definitely up my alley. I feel like this is a contender for today's makeup, but I'm not quite done. You guys, I am about to show you 
a brand that I have never tried before, that I have never featured on my YouTube channel, just because I'm honestly not that familiar with this brand. I'm talking about Kaleidos makeup. They sent me this big old trunk of all of their products. This one looks very decadent, very like lacy, almost like a little French couture kind of vibe. And so in this makeup trunk, we have lots of products. We've got quads, eyeshadow palettes, we've got blushes, tons of blushes in this similar packaging with the lace. I'm gonna set this behind me for just a sec. And then also I have a whole other PR package. Makeup on the bright side is their slogan. And in this package we have more makeup. And now some of it looks like it's from a different collection, but it almost struck me like it's from a different brand altogether. So whereas this trunk was giving me French boutique, almost like Moulin Rouge vibes. This collection is giving me like space age, like Y2K, 2000s. Like this is very reminiscent of 2000s Urban Decay type of pans. Got some very prismatic, very shifty highlighters here. And then also we have a whole other collection and this collection is all brights and neons. So here we have an eyeshadow palette. Very, very colorful. This is called the Escape Pod. And this opens up, kind of reminds me of like a Natasha Denona feel, but this is in a cardboard box. Again, very colorful. This row is all very shifty shades, kind of like duo chromes, but metallics. We got some neutrals and a lot of brights, obviously. So I think this is the palette that I should go for, probably utilizing a little bit of this MAC as well. I am seeing some shades that could work together potentially. So this is what I'm working with today. Let me know what you guys think of this brand, Kaleidos. Okay, on the bottom of the package over here, it says, attention, in accordance with the USFDA guidelines, shades number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number nine, number 14, number 15, are not intended for use around the eye area. So. Eight of these 15 shades in this palette are not for the eye area, even though this is an eyeshadow palette. That's something to note with like a lot of the indie brands, you gotta read the fine print. And even though sometimes things are packaged in an eyeshadow palette, some of these pigments can be potentially hazardous to the delicate eye area. I mean, my eyes are pretty sensitive and they tear up for just about any pigment that gets into their eye. But with certain colors, with like certain really bright colors, like purples and pinks and like oranges, you, know, you have to be extra, extra careful. I'm picking up the MAC Art Library palette and I'm gonna look at the ingredients list and I'm gonna see if there's any sort of verbiage that suggests anything similar since the shades are pretty similar and looks like it doesn't say that here. The difference between these palettes is that the MAC palette is made in the USA and uh, this one is made in China or in the PRC. So just something to note, at least this is something that I like to note before I try anything new from a brand that I'm I'm not really familiar with. So now that I've said all that, I definitely have to avoid a bunch of eyeshadows that I actually wanted to use. All right, I guess I'm gonna prime my eyes with the Gerard Cosmetics base that I used in my previous video. Pick up a little bit. You really don't need much of this, but I just applied a lot. Just maybe reach for this green shade. I haven't done a green look in a minute, so I guess it's time. I'm gonna grab this Laura Lee Los Angeles L19 brush. To put into this green, this one is called My Kid Could Make That. <laughs> and I'm gonna apply that to the outer portion of my lid, starting from the center, and then kind of washing that out and up like that. You know what, this is a really, really lovely bright green. It definitely shows up on camera. I can see it with the naked eye in my mirror. It's not too chalky. It's not overly bright. Sometimes with certain eyeshadows, if they're too bright, it makes it a little bit difficult to blend out. But this shade is smart. It's thin enough that you can actually blend it out and make it work with your skin tone as opposed to not. I'm actually gonna use a finger. I'm gonna pick up the Kaleidos palette and I'm gonna dip into a shade that is safe for eye usage. This green here called Galactic Gala. I say gala, some people say gala. I don't know how I feel about gala because I have always said gala. I mean, this is a beautiful shade. This is really, really, really striking. This is bright and this is gorgeous. It's giving me the princess and the frog, but more princess than frog. It works great with that matte green. I could even kind of like layer it over the matte green so that it's not 
a drastic border. Really, really pretty. Really, really pretty. There's another green here. This one's called Saturnalia. Cute names. Wondering if I can use that one in my lower lash line. I probably should. Picking up a little bit with this Makeup Geek brush. Kind of like lining my lower lash line with this one. Yeah, so there's quite a bit of fallout with this shade. It is very sparkly, and it does have like a creamy quality to it, but the sparkle definitely is dissipating underneath my eye here, and I don't know if it's gonna stick to my cheeks or not, but actually it's pretty easy to flick off, so nope, it's not sticking. That's a good thing. All right, I'm gonna use one more shade from this palette, this Bossa Nova, which is an eye safe shade. I'm gonna grab a small brush, E5 from Mario, and I'm just gonna sharpen and darken the outer portion of my lower lash line just a little bit, and then gently, ever so slightly, wing it out like that. I'm gonna grab a flat eyeshadow brush, dip into this shade here called Lo-Fi, add that directly underneath my brow, kind of like on top of that concealer that I added before. I feel like I'm utilizing a lot of old school tricks today. A lot of new, but old school reminiscent products. Okay, I'm gonna close out this palette Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna reach for my one size Point Made liquid liner in the shade Busty Brown. I like Busty Brown. And I'm gonna continue this wing. I saw this TikTok trick. I honestly don't remember who was the originator, but basically it was like a, a male makeup artist and he was suggesting to try lining your wing and making a parallel to this line of your brow. So I'm gonna try doing that because I never really did that before. And this was something new that I learned from him. And honestly, I think it looks pretty cool. I kind of like the idea of aligning my liner to my brow. And I think this especially works if you have hooded lids or like hooded outer corners. Oh yeah, and just look how cool and how fresh that looks. Kind of like that. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I believe that is the angle. I'm feeling it. I wanted to do an inner corner flick, but I feel like I've been doing a lot of inner corner flicks lately in my videos, so I'm gonna skip it this time. I'm gonna leave the eye look as is. I gotta say, I really love the color combo of brown and bright green. There's something so fresh and so unexpected about it. I should definitely utilize it more often. All right, moving on. I have a new mascara to test out, and it is from Makeup Forever. It looks really nifty, almost like it's a tool, but not a beauty tool. So basically what we have is a two-step mascara. Step one being the lift, a really tiny little wand. And step two over here being the volume. Also like a non-gimmicky, but a slightly thicker wand. And let me go ahead and try the step one first. I believe in the pamphlet that came with this product, it showed that you can wear each of these on their own and they kind of give a different effect. But then when they're stacked together or when they're like worn as a step one and then a step two together, it creates a third look, which is what I'm gonna go for. Essentially, this is the step one. It's basically like your lashes, but slightly better. You could definitely see them a little bit better. They look a little bit darker, but the formula here is very, very light, very natural, very clean looking, meaning no clumps, just definition. I mean, wow, that really did lift it. Is that a pleasant experience for me in the mascara category? Huh, kind of like that. All right, let's move on to step two. Oh yeah. I don't know if it's the one that's making the difference or if the step two is an entirely different formula, but this is definitely adding a lot more product the second time around. And so it's building up the lash while still maintaining the definition. And I think that's what actually gives the lashes a more voluminous look. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Now that we finally have a product that I definitely like off the bat, and you've made it to this point of the video, chances are you're liking this video and maybe you're also liking me. So perhaps this might be a good moment for you to hit that subscribe button in case you haven't already. In case you're new to my channel, hitting the subscribe button will help this channel grow, not just for me, but also for our community. Take this opportunity to do so, please and thank you. I like this mascara, okay. In the lip category, I have something that is so, so, so exciting, and I have a feeling that some of you might be excited too. I'm talking about the new Lisa Eldridge Insanely Saturated Lip Color Lipsticks, yes! If you're like me, and if you've been watching YouTube for a while, then you must know Lisa Eldridge. She is an incredible makeup artist, she's also a YouTuber, she is 
phenomenal. She has her own line and I'm a big fan of her lipsticks. So these are the new colors. I really like her logo too. The L with a little lippy, it's so, so cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you all the colors that I have here. And then we're gonna pick a color for my look. So altogether I have six shades. And what I like about Lisa's aesthetic is that her makeup is very, very wearable, but it's also very glamorous and just very elevated and upscale. Ooh, so I noticed that the last product that I opened up is actually a lip gloss. So I'll set that one aside. We've got Strawberry Shock. Ooh, definite contender. This would be such a fire summer combo. Strawberry Shock is a contender. Next we have Sunday Matinee. Ooh, kind of like a more wearable version of that. Next we have Palazzo. This is a slightly different formula. I can tell by the textures of the two lipsticks and I will show you a close up. Next we have Meet Me in Berlin brown. Similar shiny kind of finish as the Palazzo. And the final one is Je ne sais quoi. This one's really pretty as well. So I'm kind of in between these three shades. There's this one, there's this one, and then there's the crazy bright one. Je ne sais quoi. That's the color that I'm going to go for just because I'm going to apply this straight from the tube first. Oh, so creamy. Oh, so good. Oh my God. And this honestly has enough of a pop to work with the eyes. So I'm glad I went with this choice. I'm gonna grab a lip liner from Rare Beauty. I'm gonna go for Bold, which is just like a little bit darker than this color, but it's still warm. So I'm gonna go ahead and outline slightly. I'm gonna go back with the lipstick and just go over the liner. Now this is such a juicy formula. Super, super pigmented, but glides on almost as smoothly as a lip gloss but obviously a little bit more solid. It's not like a super, super liquidy type of formula, but man, does it feel comfortable on the lips. I love it. We're almost, almost, almost done. I'm gonna grab one of these highlighters from Kaleidos. Number three, Space Age Ray Rider. It's kind of like a golden champagne shade. And then over here we have number two, Space Age Star Surfer. This one's a little bit more pinky, just like a pinch more cool. But I'm gonna go for the gold one. I'm gonna grab this Jaclyn Cosmetics brush. Let's see if I can add a little bit of this highlighter to the back of my cheekbone, kind of like into my temple area. It's not as soft and smooth as I was expecting. Definitely one of those highlighters that enhance texture if you have any texture but the color and shift is very pretty. All right, one final, final thing. I know I keep saying this, but this is really gonna be the final, final thing that I do. I'm gonna grab this new Fix Plus Stay Over alcohol-free setting spray. I'm gonna shake it up. It smells like the old Fix Plus. There's definitely no difference there. And that is officially my final, final look. First impression, my skin and just the overall finish and texture of the foundation is reminiscent of 2016 through 2018 makeup days, beauty community days. Definitely a heavier coverage, a fuller coverage that I am putting on nowadays. At this point, I don't even think I can see my freckles. And it's not to say that I have so many different layers of makeup, I think I'm wearing the same amount of makeup that I always do. It's just that the coverage of the Beauty Blender foundation is a lot fuller than I'm reaching for nowadays. I can't say in all honesty that I miss this type of coverage. It definitely feels heavier on the face. It feels like I'm more glam than I usually am. I don't really have an occasion or a place to wear this type of coverage to nowadays. Moreover, with the shifting trends, we are just wearing a lot more natural looking foundations nowadays. That's not to say that this is a bad foundation or it's a product that I wouldn't reach for. Just need to get my hands on the right shade and I need to see how it will wear without all the additional stuff that I put on top just to make it work. I will say the Tarte Shape Tape is still king. This concealer, I need to be reaching for more often because it is just that bitch, I'm sorry. This new face primer from Elizabeth Mott, the Thank Me Later. I like the fact that it has SPF 30, it doesn't feel too sticky, but again, I'm not sure how it will wear with other products or how it will wear on its own, so I'll have to test it out a couple more times before I actually formulate an opinion on that. All right, moving on to the Sigma powder. This also felt very, very heavy to me. It felt like a lot of pigmented powder that you could see on the face. Almost like if you took your nail and you scratched the surface of the skin, 
you would scrape off a layer. That's just like the feeling that this gave me and it's not a feeling that I'm looking for nowadays. It's just not the vibe, you know? All right, moving on to some of the color makeup that I tried today. This MAC palette was surprisingly very nice, even though I only tried one shade from it, but I'm definitely intrigued and I'm going to try more shades from it. On the other hand, the Kaleidos palette that I tried for the first time, this is a brand that I have never tried before, but I've heard about it. I'm sad to say that out of the 15 shades in this eyeshadow palette, less than half of them are actually intended for eye usage. The shades that I was initially drawn to, this top row and some of the bottom, the really bright, vibrant shades are not actually safe for the eyes. So I am probably not going to be reaching for this one any further, just because I'd rather be safe than sorry. I am not like this just on camera. I'm like this in my real life. If it says not to use it on the eyes, I probably won't. I have other options that are safe to use on the eyes and that's just what I'm gonna stick with. Not to say that this is a brand that I'm gonna rule out from now on, I will definitely try out some of their other products that they sent to me and thank you so much for sending them to me. This highlighter perhaps is someone's cup of tea. It felt a little bit chunky to me. Like it kind of highlighted the texture of my skin. It didn't feel fine enough. It didn't feel luxurious enough to be worn as a highlighter, but I do like the shade. So that's just kind of like my initial impression on these first two products that I tested out. I gotta say, the product that I probably like the most in today's trial is this Makeup Forever Mascara. I thought this was promising, even though I don't think this is a waterproof formula, so I'm not sure how it will wear on my eye shape, but I did like the fact that the lift definitely lifted the lashes, and the volumizing side definitely provided volume to the lashes. So at least that wasn't a gimmick. At least it did what it said it was gonna do, it delivered. Oh my God, the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks are so stunning. The colors are so beautiful. The color that I'm wearing on my lips right now is just like making me smile at myself at the camera. I love these types of colors for the summertime and just like for any time. I feel like they bring me joy. They make me feel a little bit more vibrant. They make me feel like I'm exuding more of what I feel inside, which is happiness, which is joy, which just positivity that makes me feel good and with that said you guys this video is very very long so I'm gonna wrap it up on this very positive moment let me know if there are any products in today's review that you would try out if there's anything that you would stay away from if there's any questions comments concerns let me know below and let's talk all right zooming on out you are checking out more of my videos and I am saying farewell peace out and I'm out